morning, everyone. Let me, let me thank you all for being here. Um, before I get started, I want to obviously, and, and as always, take the time to thank and acknowledge uh, the hard work of our Chief Financial Officer, Brendan Hanlon, uh, Budget Director Stephanie Adams, and the entire Budget Management Office, uh, and the many, many staff members throughout every department in the city that work hard to get us to this place where we have the preliminary 2018 budget uh, to present today to Denver City Council. You know, there's an old saying that says, don't tell me what you value, um, show me your budget, and I'll tell you what you value. And the budget should reflect the priorities and values of our people. Today, I am proud to present my administration's 2018 budget proposal for consideration by City Council and the public. This $1.39 billion general fund planning spending plan meets our city's top priorities and addresses the critical needs of a changing, diverse city. This is a responsible budget and a balanced budget. It's a spending plan that will allow us to manage population growth and continue to deliver the highest quality of services to the people of Denver. The budget will improve transportation and mobility, connect all residents to economic opportunities, help make Denver a bit more affordable for families, assist those in need and address behavioral health challenges, and strengthen our healthy, livable neighborhoods. While the state of our city and the state of our economy remain strong, we continue to have the desire for the economy to be strong for everyone. My administration continues to focus on improving people's lives, serving the needs of our most vulnerable and keeping our neighborhoods safe for everyone. The 2018 budget proposes smart investments that will allow us to directly meet our most pressing challenges, including $21.6 million for affordable housing, $31.5 million for initial elements of Denver's Mobility Action Plan to accelerate the policies and projects necessary to offer mobility freedom to all by supporting the choices we know our residents want to make. $4.5 million for new sidewalk repair program, including a revolving uh, fund to help residential property owners afford sidewalk repairs. Directing special Marijuana revenue, $5 million to fix and repair aging streets and other transportation infrastructure, and $4 million to fix aging parks and recreation centers. $3.6 million for expanded trash and re recycling services to move us closer to our 2020 diversion goals. Funding for the new My Denver Prime program, which will expand discounted access to our rec centers for all residents 60 and older. 22 uniformed police officers to keep pace with our city's population growth, and increased investment of $3.7 million for emergency homeless services and facilities, expanded services and resources to address behavioral health needs, including the growing opiate epidemic in our city, and funds that will help make it easier for folks to do business with the city. I'm also very pleased to announce that we will be creating a new $1 million community-driven budgeting opportunity that will give us a chance to pilot uh, the opportunity of giving residents uh, a direct ability to engage a decision-making, in decision-making, and priority setting for neighborhood improvement projects. I look forward to the dialogue with City Council uh, as we begin budget hearings later this month with final adoption, of course, as always in November. Now let me bring up our Chief Financial Officer, Brendan Hanlon, who will give us more background information on this uh, budget proposal. Brendan. Thank you. Good morning, Brendan Hanlon, Denver's Chief Financial Officer. Can you guys hear me okay? Uh, first, I want to thank Mayor Hancock and the city agencies who worked very hard to create this budget. I also want to thank Budget Director Stephanie Adams and the entire budget and management team for their hard work on the 2018 budget and their commitment to providing the residents of Denver with a comprehensive and transparent budget book. I am incredibly proud to work alongside the finance team and the lead of the Department of Finance as Chief Financial Officer. For the first time, this year's budget book has 
been uh, converted into a simpler layout uh, with more uh, simple tables and photos that would make the book more digestible and more transparent. And I encourage you to take a look. Uh, I'm happy to report that the city's financial condition is strong. Our city has demonstrated a history of balancing our budget, maintaining strong reserves, keeping tight financial controls, and providing open and transparent reporting. These financial management practices have allowed us to continue to earn a triple A rating by the top three credit rating agencies and remain in a strong financial position. The 2018 budget will allow us to maintain these healthy reserves in a strong credit rating while meeting the needs of a growing and diverse city. About half of Denver's tax revenues come from sales and use tax, and we continue to see steady core sales and use tax revenue growth. So far this year, that growth is around 6%. That follows 6.5% growth in 2016 and 4% growth in 2015. Core collections are projected to grow by 3.7%, and this is a metric that we use to better understand the health of the economy. The core gro uh, growth rate factors in a full year impact of the charitable organization's tax exemption uh, relief that was provided in July, on July 1st, 2017, and will be phased in fully in 2019. Without this tax exemption, the projected core sales and use tax growth would have reflected 4.9% in 2018. State forecasts point to continued growth, but show signs of possible moderation, and this budget assumes that the city is seeing continued stable growth into 2018. Home prices in Denver continue to increase, but at a slower rate, and unemployment in Denver was 2.4% in July, compared to 4.3% nationally. We remain committed to ensuring that Denver's reserves stay at a level that will position us to weather any financial uncertainties that may occur in the future. For this year, our financial reserves will be at 15.2%. The mayor's 2018 budget proposes smart investments that allow us to directly meet our most pressing challenges, like affordability, particularly in our housing market, traffic, and behavioral health, including a worsening opioid epidemic. It also positions Denver to preserve our high financial ratings, maintain healthy reserves, and focus on responsible growth. Thank you, and I'd like to turn it back over to Mayor Hancock for questions. Thank you, Brendan. Let's go ahead and uh, open it up for Q&A. Mr. Mayor, the budget, there's a lot of hiring positions. Um, can you just talk about some of the difficulty filling some of those positions. As you know, we have a very low yeah. unemployment rate. Yeah. Um, 911 center in particular. Yeah. You know, we, we, we recognize that um, we stand in one of the most economically vibrant cities in the country, and you're right. 2.4 percent on unemployment rate is one of the indicators you point to to determine how economically healthy the city is. People are working. We're proud of that. It's a good thing. Uh, but what we're seeing in government and not only here at the city level, but at the state level, is that we're finding increasingly more competitive fill positions in the city of Denver. So we continue to work with the Human Resource Office uh, to fill these positions. Obviously, as a city, we're also thinking and looking how we can become more competitive. I think it's a great place to come and work. It's very steady, uh, great benefits. It's great commercial for the city of Denver. Uh, but we'll continue to be more creative in how we reach out and try to attract people and attract new talent to our city. Mayor, is there a uh, council living raise or any other kind of uh, merit raises funded in this budget? Yes, we uh, have our cost of living raises uh, coined into the budget as well. I don't know if the police chief can take any questions, but... We've muted the chief for the next for the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you're getting some new officers uh, under this proposed budget. Uh, what could you, could you discuss where you'd like to deploy them? And second part is um, a program to pair officers with opioid experts, mental health individuals. How important is that program of addressing uh, that issue? In our well, we're, we're fortunate in that we have a, a significant uh, relationship with, with Denver Health uh, through one of, uh, one of our directors, Reggie Herger, 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 and we actually hire or employ uh, crisis individuals uh, that that have a critical background in dealing with individuals that are 
in any kind of crisis situation, whether it's the opiate or whether it's some other issues. And those are civilians that are well trained to work hand in hand with the police officers. And that program is going to, it's going to extend uh, and it very badly need to extend given where we are in this nation dealing with opiates. As it relates to the 22 additional police officers we're getting, actually on a daily basis we look at how we reallocate our, our resources depending on what drives police services. So. Uh, uh, I won't be able to tell you where those officers are going until we actually get them and we take a look at where we are at that time and where we need to put those resources. So that resource allocation is really based on uh, where the need is and that need changes from, from day to day. Yes, Lance. Uh, would you go into a little more detail about the uh, uh, mobility action plan, uh, specifically how it applies to the Vision Zero action plan? Well, Vision Zero, of course, is a part of our mobility action plan, and our goal there, of course, is to, uh, and we make allocations to the Vision Zero effort in the 2018 budget. It's just over $3 million, if I uh, remember the number off the top of my head. But we, we are making, with regards to the overall mobility action plan, our first real investment, about $31.5 million in our mobility action plan this in the 2018 budget. As I said in the State of City Address, you will see in my budget um, really a demonstration of what we value and what we see as a priorities. And we believe, of course, fixing our roads and bridges in the City of Denver is a top priority. The public has made, been very clear to us that that's a very important priority for them. And with regards to Vision Zero, um, 2017 so far we've seen 40 deaths, uh, vehicular deaths in our city. Um, we, we've got to move very quickly to fix uh, to address that issue. I've directed my team to immediately lean in on this um, and to identify those key areas of town where we're seeing the highest level of uh, accidents and fatality, uh, uh, fatalities as a result, and, and to find a way, short and long term, that we can begin to address some of these. And I think in 2017 and continuing in 2018, you're going to see us making investments and really zeroing those, those areas, particularly as part of our Vision Zero effort. You bet. Any others? All right. Thank you all for being. Yes. Um, this is actually for Chrissy, maybe. If okay. Chrissy's taking questions. Chrissy. I don't know. It depends on the question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Mr. Mayor, maybe you too. But it, uh, with 29 new employees in the Transportation and Mobility Department, it seems like you can get a lot more done a lot more quickly. Can you just talk about what those employees will do for the pace of change in Denver's transportation scene? Yeah, and it's a wide variety of, of um, positions that we have to sort of think about how do we deliver faster along the way. Um, everything from the intake side, you know, what's the project going to be, how do you plan the project, all the way to the delivery. How do we increase the velocity by which we can actually deliver those projects out into the community faster, and that's really what we're focusing on. So it's, all, it's soup to nuts all the way through. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How you know we don't have an Amazon plan? <laughs> you know, listen, we're excited to compete uh, in partnership with the rest of the region for this opportunity. But you know what? I'll tell you, nothing sells the opportunity to these um, prospective corporate uh, relocations than having a fiscally sound and responsible city, one that is investing in its infrastructure, um, investing in its transit. Uh, one that invests in bringing up small businesses so they can be part of that supplier chain pipeline, uh, one that is safe, um, and one that believes that the best investments speak to the values of the people who live there. And so we're proud, excited, and this budget is a great starting place to put before Amazon and, of course, the west, rest of the region to attract this new opportunity, this mega opportunity to potentially to the region. Mr. Mayor, there's, there's a lot of allocation for transportation mobility in this budget that will help with the comprehensive Denverite plants, transit, pedestrians and trails, and land use, transportation, parks. Um, but where is that money going to come from to implement those plans in the future? Because there's not really anything directly allocated towards those plans, and they might be done maybe early next year. Sure. Well, we also started, of course, with um, the development of a very robust engagement process to engage our public around our general obligation bond. And the unanimous referral of that ballot question, or ballot questions, I should say, by City Council is a very great step. As you'll see, over 490 what million dollars, more almost half of that bond is 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 uh, designed to address the issues of mobile, mobility, and to address the safety as part of mobility, the Vision Zero effort, and all that we're doing. All this is part of the interconnectedness of the Denver Right effort and land use and how we invest in our open space and all the things that you just laid out. 
So when you ask where that money comes from, that's what I said in our state of city address. This general obligation bond is our first giant step toward meeting the $2 billion commitment around mobility action, as well as bringing up our other amenities and infrastructures to a point where we remain globally competitive, okay? All right, folks, thank you very much. Thank you all. Good job.